Today I want to share an idea. There's a lot of talk in the history bounding community about the importance of pockets. And while that's certainly not in dispute, there is an alternative to just throwing small items into a pocket. This is an example of a late Victorian or early Edwardian chatelaine. Chatelaines have been around for many, many hundreds of years, but this one I put together for that specific time period. You would often have sewing items. This is an antique emery pincushion. You could also have needle cases and thimble buckets and hanging scissors. Small useful items. This is a hook for doing up the buttons on your gloves. Mechanical pencils are actually kind of a favorite of mine. Um, spare lead is kept under the top. You'd slide the ring, in this case, um, and there's a lead pencil that comes out. This one has a second ring that exposes a nib holder for a dip pen. Maybe some keys, the little notebook. This one has a removable paper insert, but I've also seen them with shell or bakelite or bone or something that you would wash and reuse. A watch was often hung as well. Also religious items or sentimental items. A chatelaine is very much an item of personal expression and no two would have been the same. What I'd like to do is history bound the chatelaine. Make something that's a little more modern yet historically inspired. So let's look at the pieces of the chatelaine. At the top we have a hook this was designed to hook up over your skirt waist. You wouldn't have put this on with an evening gown. All different members of society wore them. A housekeeper would have had very utilitarian things such as keys to the house or keys to wind the clocks, any tools to assist her in her job. On the other end of the spectrum, you could also have a very decorative one with jewels, sewing items, and more artistic things. So this is an Edwardian hook. Uh, this one actually came with this little booklet. You can see it's the hook on the top, and then it has a ring at the bottom down here to hang your chains off of. This is another example of a late Victorian, early Edwardian chatelaine hook. This one has your top hook to put your skirt on and then a bottom hook to hang a ring from with your chains. Then you have as many chains as you would like tools. Some have chains with all the same length so that all your tools are hanging in a row and some of them have varying lengths. Often the chains have some kind of latch at the bottom so that you can open them and exchange tools out as you saw fit. And some are fixed so that that item always stayed with that chain. That's how this was. This was the original piece that I bought for this when it had the book. The book is fixed onto this specific chain, which is fixed onto the ring with this top on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate this idea in a historically inspired or history bounding sort of way. Starting with the hook, I wouldn't use this Edwardian one every day because the metal is very soft and I would imagine that it wouldn't take long for this ring to break off. This one is also an antique, but it's much heavier. The metal is much thicker and stronger, so I wouldn't mind using this on a daily basis because I don't think that I would hurt it. If you want to go 100% modern, this or something like this can be found for a couple dollars on Amazon or in the keychain section of almost any hardware store. With this one, you're supposed to hook the top part here over your belt or pocket or something, and then hang your keychain off the lower part here. You could also put your ring directly onto a lanyard clip and hang that on a belt loop if you wanna wear it with jeans or something with belt loops. There's lots of different kind of hook ideas that you could use. So next we're gonna look at chains. This is the only example of antique chatelaine chain that I have, and it's quite big. Chain this size can be found at hardware stores or in the jewelry section at craft stores. You can also go very fine if you want a very delicate chatelaine and get a like, necklace chain like this. If you have little ones like I do, however, I would not recommend this because one good tug and they'll just start pulling things off. So for me, I'll be using chain about this size for my example. It's also pretty close to the size of the uh, of the original antique one that I have. Now with the bottom of each chain, I like to have opening links or hooks because I like to change it around depending on what I'm likely to be doing that day. You don't have to. You can certainly just open the bottom ring of your chain or a jump ring and permanently fix things to their own chains. Being that I'm going to use a silver hook, and silver chain, I'm probably gonna buy silver ones of those later and swap them out so that all the metal matches color, but I think it'll work quite well for now. 
All right, so what am I gonna hang from my chatelaine? Here are some things from my everyday carry that I think could be hung on a chatelaine very nicely. First, a small flashlight. This one has a belt clip on it, which makes it really easy to hang. Another really nice small flashlight is this mini mag that already has a little ring built into it. I'm a Leatherman fan, but they're usually really blade heavy. And with little kids, I'm not quite comfortable with that. Also, they're usually pretty large and they weigh a ton. So I'm not sure that I would hang one from the Chatelaine. Might swing around quite a bit. But they do make a couple of bladeless models and luckily one of them is quite small. It has just a pair of pliers, a small pair of scissors, and some tweezers. And I think it looks really cool. I have a number of pocket watches. This one is not an antique, but it is one of my favorites. So I'll be hanging that from there. Next is a small pick holder. I play classical and bluegrass mandolin. We're a very musical family and picks are one of those things that get lost a lot. So I have a spare couple of our favorite picks here. And lastly, I've had these little Ginger scissors since my very first job, which was at a fabric store in the mid nineties. They've held up wonderfully. They're still my favorite small pair of scissors. And even though they're kind of redundant with that little pair there, I wouldn't feel bad about the redundancy because these are very sharp. They're clearly for threads and small sewing things like that. These I would use for paper or zip ties or anything that I really don't want to use my nice pair of little thread scissors for. You can get modern hangable scissor sheaths. If you have a sheath like this, you could sew rings to the sides and then hang it from a short chain loop. But this sheath fits so well and so snugly that I think I can just hang the scissors from here and it's, it's not going to come off. Now, you may have noticed I don't have any kind of sewing kit on here. Sewing kits were very common in Chatelaines, but for me, having a couple threaded needles or a couple pins wouldn't necessarily help me out a lot, especially around the house. I have my sewing box close at hand. I have a small sewing bag that lives in my purse. And I think that for me, at least, it just wouldn't be all that useful. So I'm gonna skip a sewing kit to fit on this Chatelaine. All right, so let's head back to the dress form and put it all together. So I hung this one back up for reference. We're gonna start off with a choice. Do I wanna use the antique one that's a little prettier or the sleeker, more modern one? And I think I'm gonna go with the old fashioned one just because I do think it's strong enough to withhold everyday use. And it's also something that you can switch out if I change my mind and I think it's gonna be a little rougher or something. I can definitely just swap that one back into it. All right, so I'm going with a standard just split keychain ring because they're very strong and I think it'll look just fine hanging there from that. So let's get our chain. I remember this has another hook in the back so it just hooks directly from it like that. And let's start with getting some lengths on here. And like I said, I'm gonna use different lengths. I like this look rather than having everything at the same length. I think they, uh, they bang into each other less this way. So we'll get started. We'll put some varying lengths of chain on here. All right, so we've got our chains. I went ahead and put a hook directly on the loop as well because I know that I want my pocket watch as high as possible. And then I've just got some different lengths. So then I'll take some pliers. Open up the loops. And close it back up again. So we'll do this to all the chains. Um, like I said, you don't have to. You could put your item directly on the bottom of the chain, but I know that I'm going to want to change this out a lot and rearrange things if I decide to put them in different places or something. So I'm going to go ahead and put hooks on the bottom of each chain. Okay, so now I've got 
my hooks and you can see it's starting to take shape. So now comes the flower arranging part. Let's take our things and start hooking them on where it feels like they should go. Some things I am going to want a longer chain for so I have a little more reach without having to remove it from the chain. Some things like my pocket watch I don't want to have banging around against other things so I want to keep them kind of high up. I'm trying to make this as user friendly as possible because it is supposed to be a tool and you'll find that things on the bottom are going to swing a lot. So sometimes if you do end up with something really heavy at the bottom, you might get kind of over having it bang into things and you'll, you might want that one higher up. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna add is the pocket watch because I know exactly where I want that to be. I want that to be nice and high up here. The longest thing on here might either be the Leatherman or the scissors. I think either way I want to be able to remove them from the chain if I ever need to use them and that'll be easier with more length. If this flashlight's just way too heavy, you try a lighter model. The difference between a AAA and a AA is actually pretty big as far as weight goes. So something smaller like this might actually look nice. All right, I think that works, I like that. You can see I took the ring and I flipped it over so that the pocket watch is hanging here in the middle and the, uh, the pick holder is kind of more on the outside. And then I've got the heavier things hanging down here. The pocket watch is nice and safe up high, so I think that that's pretty good arrangement for the things that I wanna carry. Remember, this is about making a historically inspired way to carry around some small EDC items or everyday carry items. It's certainly not meant to be worn with a costume or for reenactment. It's strictly historically inspired, specifically for history bounding. I'm trying to capture the sounds and the imagery and the original intent of this historical object. Chatelaines were worn for many hundreds of years and it's a shame that they've disappeared. They're, they're so beautiful and they're so functional. But, as history bounders, we are allowed to use things that have disappeared. So this is my interpretation of a historically inspired chatelaine. How about you? If it has inspired you to create your own, I would really love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram. Kind of a what's in my bag, only instead a what's on my chatelaine. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Don't pull. Is that cool? Yeah. That's awesome. That's beautiful. You don't like that up there. Well, watch out. Be careful. Be careful. You little careful. bull in the china shop. Oh, yeah. Come on, dude. Can we go? No. Oh, no. No. Ah. 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 Oh, God. Not another one. No, so good. <laughs>